Okay, so now this is part two, still in comprehensive medical terminology. This is the pathological conditions that go along with the digestive system. So we have achalasia, which is defined as a decreased mobility of the lower two thirds of the esophagus, along with constriction of the lower esophageal sphincter. We have an anal fistula. This is an abnormal passageway in the skin surface near the anus, usually connecting with the rectum. So this may occur as a result of a draining abscess. And then we have aphthous stomatitis. So this is a small inflammatory non-infectious ulcerated lesion occurring on the lips, tongue, and inside the cheeks of the mouth, also called a canker sore. I get them all the time. Um, my mom and dad used to say if you got one on the tip of your tongue, it was called a lie bump, right? Um, or if you like jam your toothbrush too hard into your gum or your lip or something like that, you can get a little canker sore. All right, and then we have appendicitis, so just exactly what it looks like, right? So appendix and itis, so the inflammation of the appendix. Um, this is usually an acute condition, meaning it happens pretty quickly, um, that can lead to the rupture or perforation of the appendix, um, which can make you super sick. We have celiac disease, so this is a nutrient malabsorption due to damaged small bowel mucosa. So this is whenever people are like not just gluten intolerant, like they're very gluten sensitive. Um, I have a my husband has a friend that he works with that's got celiac disease, and he um, like on his deathbed sick if he ever is uh, around or absorbs any sort of gluten. Um, then we have cirrhosis. So this is a disease of the liver um, that's chronic, right? So chronic meaning it happens over a long period of time and it's degenerative. So it breaks down, right? It's causing injury um, to the hepatocytes. Um, so fat infiltrates the lobules of the liver, causing the tissue covering the lobes to become fibrous. So the function of the a liver is eventually um deteriorated. So it just kind of uh, deteriorates your liver. So question, if appendicitis is not diagnosed promptly, the appendix ruptures and spills its contents into the abdominal cavity. This causes inflammation of its lining, which is called the, anybody know? That would be the uh, the peritoneum. So that's peritonitis. Um, so peritonitis is inflammation of the peritoneum. Um, then we have colorectal cancer. So this is the presence of a malignant. So malignant meaning cancerous neoplasm. So that's meaning new growth in the large intestine. We have constipation. So this is a state in which the individual's pattern of bowel elimination is characterized by a decrease in the frequency of bowel movements and the passage of hard dry stools. So um, it can just be hard to defecate or go or poop. It's hard to poop. We have Crohn's disease. So this is a, is a digestive tract inflammation of a chronic nature. Um, it, cause, it can cause fever, cramping, diarrhea, weight loss, and anorexia. Again, not the eating disorder, just a lack of wanting to eat, okay, or the ability to eat. Um, so then we have dental caries. So this is tooth decay caused by acid forming microorganisms. Um, the treatment of choice when it comes to tooth decay um, is prevention through flossing and brushing of your teeth. So brush your teeth. All right, then we have diverticular disease. So this is characterized both, um, it's something called diverticulosis or diverticulitis. So diverticulosis is a non-inflamed outpouching or herniation of the muscular layer of the intestines, um, and it's usually in the sigmoid colon. And then diverticulitis is an inflammation of those little outpouchings. So whenever somebody has diverticulitis or diverticulosis, um, it's pretty common for them to be told not to eat um, things that have like small seeds, so like strawberries or popcorn or sunflower seeds or things like that. Because sometimes um, if they have diverticulosis and they have these little out, 
out pouchings in their intestines, if they eat something like that and it gets caught, that's kind of when that inflammation or diverticulitis kind of comes into play. Um, so it looks exactly like this. So this is the diverticulum, right? Those are that um, part of the intestine. So diverticulitis, it's this little out pouching. So it's almost like a little hernia, right? Um, and that can cause that to, to become inflamed and even infected. Um, and then we have dysentery. Um, if anybody ever played Oregon Trail, right? Um, you died of dysentery, sorry. So I'm just kidding. But this is a term used to describe painful intestinal inflammation, typically caused by ingesting water or food containing bacteria, protozoa, parasites, or chemical irritants. Um, so the person has pretty frequent stools that often contain blood. And then we have um, esophageal varices. So this is a swollen, um, twisted vein located in the distal end of the esophagus. And sometimes they can start to bleed and cause like an, a gastric bleed. They're really pretty dangerous. And then we have gallstones. Um, uh, so this is a pigmented or hardened cholesterol stone formed as a result of biocrystallization. And then we have hemorrhoids. So a hemorrhoid is an unnaturally distended or swollen vein in the distal rectum or the anus. Um, it may be internal or external. We have hepatitis. So this is acute, meaning it happens pretty rapidly, right? Or chronic, something that happens over a period of time. Inflammation of the liver due to a viral or bacterial infection. Um, it could also be caused by drug use, um, alcoholism, um, toxins, or parasites. Um, then we have a hernia. So this is an irregular protrusion of tissue, um, organ or a, organ, organ, excuse me, <laughs> or a portion of an organ through an abnormal break in the surrounding cavities muscular wall. So sometimes little babies will get like a, a, a umbilical hernia, right? Or if somebody lifts something too hard, um, it can cause like a little tear and then things start to come out through it that aren't supposed to. Um, so these are usually fixed with um, surgery. So this is kind of considered a hernia, right? So the stomach's starting to protrude up that way. Um, and then we have herpetic stom stomatitis. So this is the inflammatory infectious lesion in or on the oral cavity um, occurring as a primary or secondary viral infection caused by herpes simplex. Okay. Um, so that is like a uh, fever blister. Okay. So question in the picture of the hernia, um, the stomach is protruding through which muscle? So I'll go back. I'm going to say that this muscle is helping to keep everything that's supposed to be down here down and everything that's supposed to be up here up. I'm going to say that's the B, the diaphragm. Yay. Okay, so the cardiac sphincter is enlarged, which causes part of the stomach to protrude through that opening. Good job. All right, so then we have Hirschsprung's disease. Um or a congenital megacolon. So this um, is uh, defined as absence at birth of the uh, autonomic ganglia in a segment of the intestinal smooth muscle wall that normally stimulates um, peristalsis. And we have ileus. Uh, this is the obstruction of the intestine. So this may occur due to twisting of the bowel um, or like a a blockage of some sort. Um, so like a tumor or something like that. We have intestinal obstruction. So this is uh, the complete or partial alteration in the forward flow of the contents of the small um, and large intestine. And then we have interception. So this is the telescoping of a portion of the proximal intestine into the distal intestine, usually in the ileocecal region causing an obstruction. So it typically occurs in infants and young children. I don't know if this shows a picture. Yes, it does. Perfect. So think of a telescope, right? So telescopes kind of fall 
onto each other or into each other, right? So this is the proximal va uh, vowel. So that means it's, it's right, proximal is closer to, right? And then the distal vowel. So this distal vowel is kind of folding up into the proximal vowel, um, like a little telescope, okay? And then we have um, IBS or irritable bowel syndrome. So this is an increased motility of the small or large intestinal wall resulting in abdominal pain, flatulence, nausea, anorexia, and the trapping of gas throughout the intestines. Um, and then we have oral um, leukoplakia. So this is a precancerous lesion occurring anywhere in the mouth. Uh, pancreatitis, so that's the destructive inflammatory condition of the pancreas. So it can be something that happens pretty rapidly or acute, or it can be something that happens over time or chronic. Um, and we have peptic ulcers or gastric ulcers. You may hear du uh, duodenal ulcer or perforated ulcer. So this is a break in the continuity of the mucous membrane lining of the gastrointestinal tract. Um, as a result of hyperacidity or a bacteria called H. pylori, um, and that can cause ulcers. So a peptic ulcer um, is something that can happen pretty rapidly or it can kind of occur over a longer period of time, so it can be acute or chronic. Um, it's usually single or it could be clustered with, you know, a few smaller ones, and sometimes they can be pretty shallow and sometimes they can be pretty deep. Um, symptoms of that are a gnawing epigastric pain, um, heartburn or indigestion, nausea and vomiting, and then bloated feeling after eating. Um, and we have periodontal disease. So this is a group of inflammatory gum disorders like gingivitis. Um, it may lead to the degeneration of the teeth, gums, and sometimes the surrounding bones. Um, so it can cause... Um, pyorrhea, which is inflammation of the gums, kind of later in the stage of that. Um, and it can really lead to, like, the breaking down of that gum tissue, the breaking down of the teeth, tooth loss, and really bad breath. Um, then we have polyps, or more specifically colorectal polyps. So this is a small growth projecting from the mucous membrane of the colon or rectum. Um, it may be sessile, which means it's attached by the base, or um, I'm not even going to be able to say this, Pedu pedunculated, pedunculated, <laughs> which means it's attached by a, by a stalk. So um, how do I explain this? So if you look at, just go with me. So if you look at like a stalk, a floret of broccoli, right? Um, if it's pedunculated, it's attached by the stalk. So that means that it would be attached to that um, mucous membrane by the bottom of the trunk of that little broccoli floret, right? So if it's um, sessile, that means that that trunk or that stalk of the broccoli is broken off and it's attached like that, like a little um, head of a broccoli. Is anybody going to be able to eat broccoli now? Okay, sorry. So this may vary in size and may be benign or precancerous. Benign meaning non-cancerous or precancerous meaning it's heading to something that's a little more serious. And then we have thrush. So this is a fungal infection in the mouth and throat producing sore, creamy white, slightly raised curd-like patches on the tongue and other oral mucosal surfaces. And it's caused by um, candida albicans. So it's like a yeast infection in your mouth. Um, best thing you could ever do for this if somebody has it. Um, sometimes babies will get it. Like if the mom is put on a antibiotic treatment for something and then the baby gets um, like a yeast infection in its mouth, right? Um, there's something called gentian violet. It's a little tincture, right? So you cover the baby's mouth in that gentian violet um, and then any surface that the baby kind of chews on. So you would have to like treat the breast and any bottles or pacifiers or anything like that. And it usually gets rid of them. It stains everything bright purple though, just FYI. So this is what would be considered um, thrush. But in worst cases, it's going to be like, it's going to cover the whole surface of the mouth. 
Um, and then we have um, um, ulcerative uh, colitis. So this is a chronic, so happening over a long period of time, inflammatory condition resulting in a break in the continuity of the mucous membrane lining of the colon in the form of ulcers. So it's characterized by large, watery, diarrheal stools containing mucus, pus, or blood. All right, and then we have um, volvulus. So this is a rotation of the loops of the, of the bowel causing a twisting on itself that results in an intestinal obstruction. So it's almost like twisting, like if you have a long party balloon and you twist it, right, and it causes an obstruction from one side to the other, that's kind of what I imagine whenever it talks about this. Yep, just like that. Okay, so question, peptic ulcers and ulcerative colitis are a break in what lining? Is it the muscular lining? I think we just talked about, um, I'm going to say C. Good. So the mucus coating is needed to protect underlying structures in a highly acidic environment. Good. All right. Um, I'm going to do this as part three. So look for part three soon.